What if I told you that you can now build a Shopify store with zero coding experience? Thanks to the AI-powered code editor I'm going to talk about, that dream is now possible. In my 10 years of building and optimizing hundreds of Shopify stores, one clear factor consistently separated success from failure. How quickly are you able to test and implement new ideas? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom Shopify section without having to write a single line of code. If you always wanted to customize your Shopify store without having to hire a developer or having to learn how to code, this video is for you. You can simply describe what you want with text and images and the code will be generated for you. So maybe you are new to coding. As you know, Shopify offers a code editor in the browser where you can access your theme files. But if you want to do real theme development, that is a bit clunky and unreliable. So instead of that, developers use something that is named an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. That is practically a text editor that allows you to connect to Shopify and edit your theme files on your computer instead of inside the browser code editor. Now I've been developing Shopify stores for more than 10 years and I've used a number of these code editors. I worked with Sublime, I worked with Vim, with VS Code and VS Code being the one that I use the most and is probably the most popular one. But lately I've heard about the VS Code Killer, a new text editor that is using AI to support you and help you build things faster. Of course I use VS Code with Copilot before, another AI assistant that integrates with VS Code so I kind of knew the spiel. But boy, I was wrong. I cannot tell you how good this new IDE is. I am actually concerned and I think this will disrupt the coding industry as we know it. I mean, we all used ChatGPT before to generate some code that we would then paste inside our projects, but to have a code oriented ChatGPT that understands your project and context and to prompt it with text and images to have things created is completely different. So I guess we're living in the future now. The name of this new code editor is Cursor AI. I went and downloaded Cursor and installed it on my computer and it seemingly took all the settings from my VS Code. I never had to touch and set up anything. It worked and looked exactly as VS Code from the get-go. So I just started working with it. What can I tell you? For me, this is freaking amazing. But I let you come to your own conclusion. So let's build a custom Shopify section from scratch. So I've been working on this project. I have my Figma file and I've been working through all of these pages. And while working on this page, I found out about cursor. So I had the header. I just needed the, the rest of the page. And I went on cursor and I created this part here and this part here in literally minutes. So this is the actual page. This part here and this part at the bottom was generated in minutes with a couple of prompts and that blew me away. It's also mobile friendly and the code inside for this section is clean and nice and up to my standard. What I'm going to attempt to do is to go and build this page right here, which is an FAQ page that has a top section, which is an image banner. I kind of have this on my theme but I, I don't have the text option. So I'm going to ask cursor to add this text on top of that banner that I already have on my theme and ask it to help me add a logic to style it this way. And I'm going to create this section underneath from scratch. This implies a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of logic, because as you press a different button, this questions update and they show a certain topic questions. So if you're going to press the refund button, you're going to update the content in here and you're going to show different type of questions. This is nothing complicated, but it still would take a little bit of time to adjust and set up if it would be to build it by hand. So I'm going to give it to cursor and let's see what it can do for us. Okay. So let me go to that page and add the banner at the top first, and then we're going to add the text and then we're going to create this section over here. First, I'm going to go to cursor and on the local customizer, I'm going to go to the FAQ page and I'm going to add that banner at the top. So FAQ, 
I have the page right here, which looks like this now. I am going to replace all the sections. I have added the image that I have there. I'll just do a couple of adjustments to make it look as in my design. Okay, so we have this design and now I've added the banner at the top. Now I will have to ask cursor to add this text on top of the image. So I'm gonna go to cursor and search for section image i'm going to look for my image which is somewhere here i'm going to select this part which i know is responsible for that banner and i'm going to see these two options chat and edit if you hit edit then you have to give cursor certain commands and it will edit the code in the manner that you've asked and if you select chat instead you're gonna have a sidebar opening in here with the context of this section where you can ask questions so i'm gonna ask it to add the markup for that text that will show on top of my banner i'm gonna do that with text and i'm gonna add an image as well so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna take a screenshot of the figma design i'm gonna paste the image in here with command v and the image went in there you can also add it by clicking this button and uploading that image if you have it saved on desktop or somewhere on your computer and then i'm going to add this the following prompt please add a text field on top of the banner that will resemble the one on the example image which i've uploaded here the text should be part biennale bold and part tramilas bold these are the two fonts that i'm using on that uh, text and i should be able to edit that from settings let's see if this prompt is enough i'm gonna add that and then it's going to create some code for me you also have in here the explanation and i'm going to just apply everything so i'm going to hit apply here the code that was generated here is now applied on this side i'm going to now accept the changes and let's see how that section looks like i'm going to just refresh the page and let's see it yeah this is exactly what i needed freaking awesome it, it's supposed to be like that it, i just need the color so i'm just gonna go here and i'm gonna take the color from this element which should be this one and i'm gonna come here at the settings and i'm gonna look for yeah this is the title it added i see it has markups for ages until age six so i can add the text in here and that was saved let's see how that looks like and i think we are kind of there so this is done okay let's go underneath and let's try and create this section over here so i'm gonna go to cursor and i'm gonna create a new section which is named as minus faqs dot liquid and i'm gonna press command l so that i open up the chat window on the side and I'm gonna ask it directly to create me that section. Okay, so I'm gonna add it the following prompt, create an FAQ section that has a list of buttons on the left side, each representing a question topic as the ones that we have here. So I want to have a list of topics with the questions on the side. We have the first button set as active by default and the questions on the right side will be directly visible. When you press one of the buttons on the left, it becomes active and the questions that are under that topic will become visible. Replacing the previous questions, take the image as a reference. I'm going to add it an image in a second and populate all the topics on the image. I wanted to populate the, the information that I have here directly on that section so that we start with something on it's not going to be blank and style everything with tailwind classes because i am using tailwind on this project uh, when possible and use javascript to achieve the functionality let's take a screenshot and add it in there i'm going to just screenshot this part that i'm interested in so i'm going to add the image from my computer so that you see how that goes as well i'm going to add the image there it's going to be there and i'm going to ask it to generate some code so i'm gonna go and just apply that because i don't have any code and i'm going to save that and i'm going to accept it and let's see how that looks like first i have to go and add that section to my page now i've added this section right here but it doesn't have any data on it so i'm going to go back i'm going to select the json 
for this page and I'm going to just take the part for the FAQs which starts there and ends here. I'm going to select this part and add it to the chat. I'm going to add the image first and I'm going to say populate this schema with the information that you see on the image. For the topics that don't have questions, you can add in dummy questions. And I'm going to do that and let's see what it comes up with. And I have here the questions and the answers and everything that I need. And then I'm going to apply it to my schema. And now everything that was generated was moved in here and whatever it was was removed. And I think we should be good now. Let me save this. So I'm going to click accept and here's what it came up with. So we have the buttons on the side and they work. I see also the questions are pre-filled and the answers are beneath this work. So the plus transforms in minus and I, ha I can have multiple questions opened, which is great. If I change this, it all works. So I just need to tweak it a little bit. What I found is that cursor doesn't do very well with styling. It doesn't really nails it to the point. So it's not going to be pixel perfect. But as you can see, it took me a couple of minutes to just generate this section. And I'm going to go and change a couple of things and I'm going to make it look exactly the same. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to ask it to add borders to this and to change the, the colors. So I'm going to go and select the buttons and add it to the chat. I'm going to take another screenshot this time just for the buttons and I'm going to add that. I'm going to paste that in here and now I'm going to say style the buttons as per design. The active button has the background color and the inactive has just a border. And let's see what that changes. So this is the change that it came up with. Let's apply that and accept it. And let's take a look. And here it is. I think we are kind of close, right? Like if I take a look at my Figma file, this is quite close. I'm not sure about pixel perfect but close enough. One thing that I realized is that sometimes you have to go and do some things on your own because if now for example I want to change the font for this item so I'm gonna go to this element and I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna search for it. I would be inclined to just select this and say add to chat and make this whatever font but in it might do that, but if you, you already know the font or you already know whatever you want to add in there, you should go and add it by yourself because sometimes a uh, cursor as any AI will generate extra things that you don't need and will add some elements on the page that maybe don't help you and you might get stuck in a loop with it. And this happens a lot with styling, I find. When it comes to functionality, it didn't happen like that. It either generated what I needed or it generated something that was close and then I just had to add a couple of prompts. Let's add this and try to make it a different font and let's see what it comes up with. So make this Ramila regular font. Use tailwind. Let's see if it nails that. It would have been easier for me to just add that font in there. So here is what it tried to do. Font regular. Well this is not the class that I needed so that's why I'm going to just add it. It was close. It just didn't know that I used this prefix. I should have mentioned this in the prompt but I didn't so I'm gonna just save that and I think that we have it now. So if I take a look it's quite close. For a couple of minutes of work, I think this is awesome. And now I would just have to go and check out the settings that it generated and if 
those settings are working and if they are doing what they say they are doing but the structure and everything that I needed was generated on the fly and the workload was definitely lower than before. I would have to go inside and do some quality control but again you would do this with an employee as well if you have a subcontractor that you hire to build sections to to build websites whatever you would still have to go in and check their work. With Cursor, this happened in minutes. With an employee to build this section, I would probably have to wait a couple of hours, if not a day. You tell me if this is profitable. I think this is mind-blowing. To be able to build sections like that really quickly is amazing. And I had a couple of other sections built, like this one, for example. I modified this layout, then I built this a blog article with it. So I think this can fast track any project and this can help you develop your Shopify store much easier than before. In some cases, I even believe that you don't need to be a coder. So I guess we are living in the future now. Huh? Of course, it has a price. It's 20 bucks a month. But if you are profiting in any way from your coding, I don't think that you have a better alternative right now. And you get two weeks of free pro trial that means that you can try anything they have on pro for free for two weeks more than enough time to see the power of this and i'm not affiliated with them in any way i don't even think they have an affiliate program yet and i think you don't even need to be a coder anymore you can just feed it images and text prompts and you can get working software out of it dude this is so big let me know if you tried cursor ai and what is your opinion